Hi, I'm Jennifer from Shabby Fabrics, and today I'm so excited to share with you how to make a fabric garland. Now, just this last weekend, I was decorating the Christmas tree with my family. My daughter, Hope, had made a garland just like this out of construction paper, craft scissors, and glue. We all did that as a kid. And of course, over the last eight years of putting it on and off the tree and in and out of the ornament box, it's become pretty tattered. But when I saw that just a couple days ago, I thought, wouldn't that be so fun to make a fabric garland that was um, stiffened that would last year over year and you could make it out of any fabric that you want. Of course, paper only comes in so many colors, but fabric is truly unlimited. My challenge was, how do I stiffen the fabric? And so I looked at what products were out in the market and I cannot wait to show you what this looks like. It's adorable. So let's put this aside. This is a wonderful childhood memory from when we were little girls and now I have a big girl project that I wanna share with you. Okay. I found these fabrics. They're the Moda Crazy for Red. I love country reds and tans and creams. And this is a this is a collection that just came in and I was inspired to use that and make a garland. And here is a small piece of the garland that I made. Is this just adorable? And let me show you how to make it. It is so, so easy. So we'll put that aside for now. I cut a few pieces ahead of time. Now, don't think you have to run out and buy brand new fabric. This is a great project for your stash of um, scrap fabrics. It doesn't have to be a coordinated group of fabrics like this. You could just grab anything from your stash that inspires you and you could do the same technique. So don't think you have to go do that. But if you love a coordinated look, um, we certainly have a beautiful selection of fabric all the time at shabbyfabrics.com. So let me show you how we get started. We will take fabric and I just cut some smaller pieces. You could definitely work with a fat quarters. The product that I found that is going to be the best to get the, the, stiff, um, the stiff and durable fabric bands that we want that will last year over year, what I found was Heat and Bond Ultra Hold. Now Heat and Bond makes three levels of products from the, the fusible level. There's the Feather Light, which I don't recommend. I tried that, it was way too light. It's great for, for applique, but for this, it was definitely too light. Then there's the Heat and Bond Light. I tried that and I liked it. And I tried the Heat and Bond Ultra Hold and that was the best. It gave me the stiffest um, fabric band. So we'll be working with the Ultra Hold today. And we also have that available on the website too. So let's just get a couple pieces of fabric. This is what the Heat and Bond Ultra Hold looks like. The instructions for using it are on here and it's very straightforward. Basically a medium iron. That's really all that it comes down to. So I cut some pieces ahead of time of the Ultra Hold and here's how it works. Of course you'll, you've got a bumpy side and you've got the smooth side. The bumpy side has the glue so that will be the side that will go in direct contact with the back of the fabric. Now, if your fabric is a little bit wrinkly, I do recommend that you go ahead and iron that ahead of time. And let's do that right now so that it's completely smooth and ready to go. Okay, that's pretty smooth. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention about the Heat and Bond is it's 17 inches wide. A fat quarter is 18 inches wide. So this is a great project to use with fat quarters. So if you have a nice stash of those, and of course we always have, oh my gosh, we have, so, we have hundreds of different fat quarter sets that are already coordinated. So because this is 17 inches wide, and the fabric is 18, it's almost, it's really ideal. You can iron that down, you have a little bit of margin on either side. So this is a wonderful product to use with um, fat quarters. So I'm just gonna iron this down. And I like to start in the middle and work my way out so I don't get any bubbles. Thank you. 
The instructions say to hold for about six seconds. I just tend to move it around until I see it's down and there are no wrinkles anywhere. And we'll repeat this process with the next fabric. Now, I'm just gonna back this with one of the other fabrics, um, Crazy for Red. You could back this with a muslin. You could back this with the same fabric. You can do anything that you want. The one thing I did notice is when I backed a light fabric with a dark, I did see the dark fabric coming through to the lighter side on the other side. So I do recommend if you use a light fabric here, you use a light fabric on the back side. If you're gonna use a dark fabric here, use a dark fabric on that side. So let's get our next fabric. Oh, and again, it looks like we need to iron out a few wrinkles. There we go. Okay. We'll get our next piece going. So we'll start in the center and push our way out. Push this way, smooth everything out. Perfect. Okay. So, what we need to do at this point, let's put our pressing mat off to the side and let's go ahead and trim our fabric. I, I cut the heat and bond to just about the same size. Let's go ahead and trim off the excess fabric all the way around. And then on our fourth side, Repeat that. The other thing that I noticed when I was making the garland is I had some fabric left over, so I was going to make the coordinated quilted, the no sew quilted Christmas ornaments, which is a video that I have already recorded and it's also on YouTube. So check that one out too, so you can have a completely coordinated Christmas tree. Your garland will be you know, a variety of really fun and beautiful fabrics, and then you can save those scraps and make the no so quilted ornaments. You could do the fabric covered ornaments. There's just a host of things that you can do. Okay, so now that those two are, looks like they're about the same size, great. So at this point, what we will do is remove the heat and bond. And I like to, if you just fold the edge over, that paper will begin to release. Just peel it off. We'll do the same. Just fold that edge over. There it released. And there we are. And then we'll need to bring the pressing mat back and we will iron those two together. Okay. This is so much fun. And no two garlands will ever be exactly alike, especially if you use your scraps. Okay, so you wanna line them up so they're pretty good. And you'll, you're gonna notice there's a tackiness to that. They want to, they almost just wanna to be together because of that um, glue that's on the back side. So make sure there's nothing in between because any little, um, threads or fuzz that is in between them will be there forever once you iron them together. So make sure everything is good and smooth. And then just like before, we'll start in the middle and we'll iron our way out to the sides. And you'll hear it. Do you hear that? It's the glue actually gluing to each other. Now, 
Now you wanna make sure the pieces are one right on top of the other because you don't want any glue oozing out onto your iron. If you're concerned about that, you may wanna cover this with a, an inexpensive ironing cloth and that way just in case they aren't lined up exactly top to bottom, if any glue does ooze out, it oozes out on the ironing cloth and not your nice iron. Of course, if it does get on your iron, there's plenty of iron cleaners out there. I've used them before and they work great and you have, your iron basically looks brand new once you clean them. Okay, so now that we've done that, we're ready to go to the next stage and see how this is now reversible. So we're done with the iron. So we'll turn that off and put that off to the side. Now when I was um, figuring out how to put this together, my first strips I just cut with my rotary cutter. But then I realized that fabric with a raw edge over time, especially if it's being handled, can fray. So the best way to control the fraying was with a, what's called a pinked edge. It's that little zigzag edge. And wouldn't you know that Ulfa makes a pinked edge blade that goes right on your same rotary cutter. So you can either buy a second rotary cutter and just leave that pink uh, blade on there all the time, or you could use this rotary cutter and simply switch out the blade when you're getting ready to do the next step. Plus, the cute little um, pink edge, not only does it reduce fraying, but it's just adorable. It has that sweet little scalloped look, kind of a more Victorian look that I like. So we will now cut our strips. Now the width that you cut the strips to is one and a half inches and the length is seven. But keep in mind, let's say you have a little miniature Christmas tree that you want to be, to be decorating, maybe in your um, craft or sewing room. You can play with the width of these strips and the length so that it's the right scale for your Christmas tree. For this particular garland, I did cut my strips to one and a half inches uh, wide by seven inches long. So let's show you how I did that. So we'll line everything up. And using this pinked blade is so much fun. It's something I have really never done before. I have not had really a reason to use a pinked edge until now. You use it just like you would any other rotary um, blade. So now we'll measure one and a half inches. And we'll do a couple more strips. Okay. You can see I was cutting a lot of, uh, a lot of garland over the weekend. I, I used that blade quite hard. It's already getting just a little bit on the dull side because I used it, okay, several hundred times this weekend making those garland strips. Um, so let's cut that edge. And I mentioned seven inches, so let's cut seven. There's a couple, and we'll do it again. So this is what the strips look like. They're now basically reversible. So as you're making your garland, you can decide, well, I like, I like this fabric this time, and then maybe you like that, that fabric the next time. So let's show you how to do the next step. I chose to use a glue gun instead of like the Elmer's glue that we used when we were kids, just because it's a more immediate result. And the, the Elmer's glue did not work very well with the fabric whereas the glue gun was, it just worked fabulous. So I cut some other colors ahead of time so that you'd have a variety to see how you can either completely go random with the patterning, or if you like the look that I created here, what I did, you basically see a pattern developing on the side and then there's a pattern on the top as well. I like the candy cane look. So I wanted to see red tan, red cream, red tan, red cream. 
I liked the sequence of that, the rhythm of that, and that way too you would see red, white, red, white, red, white on the side. If you like that patterning, you'll go red, red, white, white, red, red, white, white, and that will create that sequence. Or again, just go completely random. It's whatever makes you happy. There is no right or wrong way to do this. So just starting with any fabric, we'll just put a little bead of glue, hot glue, right along the edge. And you wanna work quickly because the glue does tend to dry very quickly. And I'm gonna continue with the red, red, white, white sequence. So my next fabric would be here. I will fold that over, put a little bit of my glue. And now I will go to, oh, I like this one. Let's do that color. So I did the red, red. Now I'm gonna go white, white. And obviously white, white is just more of an expression. This isn't white, it's a cream and that's a tan, but that's what I'm referring to. And then I'll do another one. See how quickly this goes? Once you prepare the strips, it just flies. This goes super fast. The other thing too, while I'm planning to put my garland on my Christmas tree, it looks really adorable on a mantle. And of course, you could do something just like this in non-Christmas colors any time of the year for say a birthday celebration or any celebration. It's just so cute and so fun and so easy. So there you have it. That's how quick, easy, and fun it is to make the fabric garland. You know, we have lots of fun tutorials on shabby fabrics and I'm always trying to think of new ways to use fabric. So I hope you will subscribe so when new videos do become available, you'll be one of the first to know. Thanks again.